actually. Oh, I'm live now. Can you mute it? No. But you can, like, go zoom in on that stuff and look at that so people know what's up there. And you can just now just, you know, start walking around. Watch people. And I think we're live. Am I not? That says live. Pastor Jen. Um, it says I'm live. Did she accept me already? Let me see if I can get any reception. I can tell you. Oh, nope. It said admin approved my post. So I am officially live. So just walk around. And then Should I hold it sideways instead of up and down? Sure. That's probably a better view. And okay, then so you can, when we start coming down, just video that. Just when everybody gets seated. Okay, and I, okay you guys are coming this way, around, or are you coming through the We're back? coming down the driveway, around oh, that tent, and right up there. So I'll want to, I'll want to be Probably stand, over there stand right there the where those shot people of you guys are. I can. Yep. So you're live now. Just walk around and enjoy. Everybody, I have two, see we have two people watching already that are Just listening to children. Oh, cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot people can hear us. They can hear us, yes. So, okay. yeah, just walk okay. around. You're live. Just catch what you can. They'll be great. Hi, everybody. Yes, watching. And you watching. see people are, Jessica, and then she's watching. Sue Brown is wave. watching. Wave. Yeah, you can wave. <laughs> Wave it's on the side now, Amanda. So they yeah, don't want tip it sideways. It that way. Yep. There we go. Leave it okay. up and down, I guess. I'll just have to yep, leave it up more. and down. Oh, it's okay. So just watch the comments. Oh, it's Sam videoing, guys. Say hi, Sam. Yep, we're. She's calling you. Though. Yep, I know, but I can't. I'll uh, find Amanda. Her. Oh, well, that's too bad. You could have videoed on my phone if your Wi-Fi reached. Walk up and look at that stuff, yeah. okay. and then you can walk. and family and neighbors, we want to invite you to start gathering in. And if these chairs happen to be too close for your comfort, you're certainly welcome to take a chair or two, slip it into the shade over here. You'll be able to hear us. But we would invite you to start gathering in just a couple, three more minutes. We're going to begin. And like I said, if you're not so comfortable with the chair so close, just take a couple of them, slip them under the shade. That's fine. I also want to announce before we begin, bathrooms are on here to my left. If during the uh, day you need to use some bathrooms, right back here on the corner, they're there for you all. So thank you for coming. We're going to start in just a couple of minutes.
don't think you got enough chairs. <laughs> well, there's, here, I'll grab you my really good one. No, I'll work you want to just sit in these, you guys can just park. Pick a spot. Around the corner. These will work. There's no cushions on it, but you don't fall through. They're comfortable. Otherwise, Keith might have some chairs up there, too. She wants up. It is. Are they coming? Oh, is the tractor not running? They had it running and then they turned it off again. I'm live streaming so I can't run up there and check out. <laughs> or I would. We're ready. Oh, here they come. Yeah. Are you guys not following them too? No, we're Just the grandkids? Yeah, it's too far oh. from mom. Them out yet, but they're going to be in those um, white blow up things with ice, so you can set it right in there. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're gonna they're gonna bring the rest of them out and put the ice in.
Stand in front of me. When the cars are in the over by the TV and the signs, there's a little basket over there. Welcome. I asked, I asked Christian, I said, did you guys start that up again since you had it running? He said, no, I'm like, they should have. trying diligently to get the WD going, but at all the times these old tractors have a mind of their own, she ain't going. However, this is the project that Herb wanted to get taken care of, and the boys are trying, but today she don't want to run. <coughs> and so, Herb is in the seat. You can see him sitting in the seat there. The tractor's here, and so now we're ready to begin. Thank you, gentlemen, for trying. You'll get it. You keep trying, you'll get it. Thank you for coming to remember Herb. We're going to celebrate his home going today. Of course, I want to encourage you to pray for Joe and the rest of the family because it's just hard to lose a man like this that we love so much. But we're really here to celebrate his home going. He loved the Lord. 
And we're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to read some scripture about that. I'm going to, I'm going to pray for us, and we're just going to remember Herb today. I want to say this before I pray. I was reading the Facebook announcement throughout the week. You know, you get them little reminders. You got this event coming up. And it was reminding me today that Herb's celebration of life would be taking place at 11 o'clock. So every day I'd get this new reminder, and I'd read a little bit of it every day. And a couple days ago, I'm reading through it. It said, come for food, festivities, or whatever, fun, and a brief message from Pastor Jim. <laughs> and I'm thinking, whoever wrote that didn't know Jim very well. <laughs> And maybe I'm not even sure they knew her very well. And here's why I say that. One time in our church here in Motley, I just loved to have Herb in the crowd because he would give you some feedback. <laughs> he would give us feedback, pastors. And so one day I'm, in, I'm, I'm working through the sermon and it's time to quit. It really is. And I'm not quite done. And I made a comment about... Boy, I wish that clock on the wall wouldn't always determine the finish time. And out of nowhere, Joel remembers this, I'm sure, out of nowhere, Herbie yells out, Take it down! <laughs> Referring to the clock. And so time in church was not that critical to Herb. He was there to worship. And so we've come here today to give thanks to God for a wonderful man. A wonderful man. And so I'm going to pray, I'm going to read a short obituary, and uh, turn the program over to those others that are helping us. Let's pray before we go any further. Our Father and our God, thank you for blessing us with a beautiful day. Now the tractor wouldn't start today, Lord, but that's minor. Herb would have just chuckled at that and said something like, stupid tractor. But we've gathered here today, Father, to remember your servant, your son, a child of yours who put his faith in Jesus a long time ago. And we're here today, Father, with heaviness of heart because Herb is gone, but joy in our spirit because we know he is with you. He has received his reward. God, we thank you for Herb. We thank you for the hope of heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I thank you, Father, for his family, siblings, wife, daughter, son-in-law, grandkids, his mother. And I pray for all of them. Father, will you continue to comfort them and walk with them through this journey and help them to cling to you as Herb did. Thank you for him. Guide us in this service as we have come today to remember him, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Herb E. Richmond, 78, Pillager, passed away on Thursday, April 30, at Abbott Northwest Hospital in Minneapolis. Herb was born on December 15, 1941, at Pillager, son of Bert and Ruth Van Vickle Richmond. He was united in marriage with Joanne McGilvery on January 25, 1964, in Pillager. He worked for many years doing bumper work for North Star Plating. His hobbies included playing music, fishing, golf, working at the sawmill, and spending time with family and friends. Herb has survived by his loving wife of 56 years, Joanne. His daughters, Renee and Larry House of Pillager, and Roanne and Rick Pepper of Mankato. His grandchildren, Christian House, Amanda and Keith Roush, Devron and Alexis House, Jacob, Megan Pepper, Benjamin Pepper, Andrew Pepper, Abigail Pepper, Anna Pepper, and Joel Pepper. His great-grandchild, Elias Pepper, he survived by his mother, Ruth Richmond Pillager, his brothers and sisters, Daryl and Carol Richmond, Vivian and Butch Rosecrans, Walt and Cheryl Richmond, Kenny Richmond, Gloria Rosecrans, 
and Ed and Sandy Richmond. Many nieces and nephews. Herb was preceded in death by his father, Bert, his sisters, Anise Richmond and Arliss Marshall, and his brother, Wes Richmond. Has it been since your mind felt at ease? How long since your heart knew no burden? Can you call him your friend? wondering what we were doing. We wanted to save some of Dad's ashes, so we wanted to be creative, and Rowan suggested doing a sand sculpture for each of us. So this one is for Mom. We did ours last night as a family. These are Dad's ashes. We're going to pour those in and save this. And then the gold on top is representing heaven, because that is where Dad's at right now.
had had too many. No, we're not going. about the person who Grandpa was, um, more specifically to the grandkids, but it really does explain who he is in general. Grandpa, Bumpa Herbie, Bumps, the names continue. Bumps was many things to all of us was a man with a big heart. To the grandchildren, specifically, he was our grandfather, our teacher, our friend. He was loving, compassionate, helpful, a stern leader, a comic relief, and a comforter in times of need. Bumps was very wise, but also very stubborn. Everyone knew that. I believe that many of us inherited his traits and it should bring smile to all of our faces and joy to all of our hearts, knowing that we carry not only his traits, but also memories and pieces of who he was with us. Some of us carry many more memories of him, but I know the following will hit home for most of us, if not all of us. All of us understand what hard work is in some form because of Bumpa Herbie. We all experienced the mornings of spending hours cutting and stacking wood. Sorry. At some point during this process, you probably heard what good are you? I'm 
grandpa caught you eating before we said the prayer, so he would make you pray. The time Christian and grandpa raced a storm back to the shore on the lake, when Amanda and Bumps got soaking wet trying to get the, bo the boat hooked up, when grandpa shocked Devrin with the spark plugs in the snowmobile, when grandpa almost bit off my finger with his dog jaw, and the memories go on and on. Papa Herbie loved Jesus, and he always made that known. He truly loved his family and all people in general. But I don't think a single soul will forget the touch of love and kindness he left. He was a best friend to all. Heaven really did gain another angel. sing Amazing Grace together. There is some sheet music. I don't know if it got around or not, but I uh, hope some of you have it and hope you'll join in with us. And so let's sing that together. Stand with me. Long as 
presence of Almighty God. Praise 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 God. Amen. to a lot of funerals and a lot of things get said at funerals when people pass on and I'm so thankful to hear grandchildren tributes and those kind of things what grandpa meant and I 
and I know that if we took the time and we would invite you afterwards to take the time while you're fellowshipping around the meal and sitting in the shade or sitting in the sun just visiting, remember those times with Herb, those events, those occasions. And I suppose they will bring laughter and I suppose some of them will bring tears. But it's good to remember. And a lot of things can and will be said about this good man we call Herb Richmond. You've already heard it, and I'm going to reiterate it again. He loved the Lord. He loved the Lord Jesus. He loved his family. He loved fun. He loved people. You see, friends, there's nothing more important for any of us to decide about Jesus. Herb decided about Jesus a long time ago. He decided that Jesus was important. And he was going to reflect him. And he did. Herb grew up in a large family. You heard me read the names of his living siblings and those that have passed on. They're a very close family. What a blessing that is to you, family members. What a blessing that is has been to you to have that closeness in your family. He loved spending time with his family. Loved having family over, family gatherings, family reunions or fishing trips or a lot of other things. I recall Herb telling me before that last trip to Canada, he loved those fishing trips. And I'm thinking... Man, oh man, Joe, he's getting a little beat up here. He's getting a little old. He's getting, he's got to use a walker and he's going to go again. But he loved those times to get with his brothers and grandsons and fish. He loved his Joanne so much so that right up here in the living room, a couple of weeks before he passed, he said to Amanda, if I'm not around, take care, Grandma. He loved his Joanne. Soulmates for 56 years. They've been through plenty. Ups and downs, good and hard. Health problems these last few years, they've been through plenty. Together. I didn't know her that long ago, but he lived in the cities. They lived in the cities for a while. They moved out here. They tried their hand at farming. I guess there's a few stories about that. Pigs and sheep. And I know my dad wanted to be here, too, because dad sheared herb sheep a long time ago. But Herb and Joe did life together. Saw their daughters come into the world and their daughters grow and marry their husbands and become moms and bring grandchildren into the world and Herb and Joe did life together for 56 years and they loved the Lord together worshiped the Lord together one of the beautiful things that I love about Herb Richmond and I know this to be true but I was told this the other day there are many many people in our community perhaps some here today even perhaps some watching on Facebook live that have said this about Herb Richmond to his daughters, or maybe Joanne. Your dad is the reason that I am where I am today. Talking spiritually speaking, Herb Richmond is the reason I decided, or I knew I needed to decide about Jesus. What a tribute. What a beautiful, tremendous tribute. Nothing better can be said, I don't think, about us, humanity that we pointed people to the cross, the way we lived, the way we spoke, and Herb pointed people to the cross at Calvary and to Christ by the way he lived, by the way he spoke, the way he treated people. Herb loved the Lord. He loved fishing. He loved his family. And I hope that all of us will love the Lord Jesus the way that Herb Richmond did.
Because you see, when we love the Lord first, then we begin to love our spouse in a new way, and our children, and our grandchildren, and our neighbors, and those around us the way Herb did. Herb was not necessarily one to force Jesus on people, but he was one to impress Jesus on people. And when I was thinking about that the other day, this verse came to mind, Matthew 5, two, three verses. You are the light of the world. Jesus said to his followers, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. And then Jesus said, let your light so shine. And that's what Herb did. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and they glorify your Father in heaven. I preached on those three verses the first Sunday that we were in lockdown, stay home mode. I actually preached from my living room over Facebook Live. And shortly after I got done, Herb Richmond called me. Oh, I loved it when he called me. He always called me brother, and I'd call him Herbie or brother. And he called me and he said, great work, brother. And I said, praise the Lord, Herbie. He said, I'm really enjoying this Facebook thing. <laughs> His grandsons that our granddaughters or our family had connected him. Virtually, he was connected, and he said, I really am enjoying this Facebook thing. But then he said, but it isn't like being in church. He was longing for the day to sit and worship the Lord corporately again. And that verse says, let your life so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I love that verse to describe Herb. Herb lived the light of Jesus. He really did. Was he perfect? Probably not. <laughs> I've heard something about stubborn already. But he loved the Lord. He loved the Lord first. And he took his walk with Jesus very seriously. So much so that that was shown in loving his neighbors. Mark 12, 30 and 31 says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment, Jesus said. And the second, like it, this is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Isn't that Herb Richmond? Loving his neighbors. Herb really loved the Lord to the point loving his neighbors just came naturally to him. The girls told me there were no strangers with Herb Richmond. Everyone was a neighbor. That's just who he was. Loving the Lord, living for the Lord, loving his neighbors. I suppose if Herb were here and he could hear me, he really wouldn't want me boasting about him this way. But I tell you, I'm just encouraged by his walk with Jesus. There are other pastors here today, and they can tell you too, I'm sure of it. We get plenty of discouragement. But Herb was an encourager to me, to you, to us. He loved us because he loved the Lord. He was an encourager to me, and I, I just, I'm so thankful for that, Joe. I'm so thankful for that because oftentimes we get to hear the heavy, the negative. And then along comes Herbie and says, how are you, brother? To encourage. The girls told me when Herb met someone, that someone became part of their family. That's just who he was. He even said to one of his granddaughters-in-law, when he found out she didn't have a grandparent, he said, I'll be your grandpa. That's the kind of man Herb Richmond was. One time I had asked Herb to help me move a young man. Actually, I conned him into helping me move several people. <laughs> and then he conned me into helping move somebody of his family. 
So we move several people from one home to another or from apartment or to another to a storage place to a place. And one time I asked Herb to help me use it move a young man that had lost his mom. It was just him and his mom in Motley in a trailer house. And I called up Herb and I said, can you help me move Mike to Wadena? So sure enough, Herb was there. He was there with a pickup and probably a trailer. And we moved him. And Herb then began to have that connection with Mike. Mike loved him. And Herb treated him like everybody else with love and respect. A lot of people didn't treat this young fellow with love and respect. And when Herb did, it meant volumes to this young man. And pretty quick, Herb and I found out he uh, didn't have any money for his mother's tombstone. And Herb went to work, making sure that a headstone was gotten, and made sure and oversaw the placing of that stone so that young man could go visit his mother, which he did on a daily basis for three years. And there was a headstone there thanks to people like Herb Richmond, loving his neighbor in everyday life. You heard that uh, he worked in the bumper factory. Of course, I didn't know how that started, but when Joe and Herb moved up here, he went there and apparently he said to Joe, I'm going to start working here. And uh, he went in to fill out an application. Joe was wondering what in the world is taking him so long. Come to find out, Herb had told the folks inside he wanted to see the main man. And apparently he wasn't leaving until he did. He was prepared to sit there until he saw him. Well, long story short, Herb did go to work there, and he worked there for the next 36 or 37 years. He loved his sawmill over here, too. He loved apparently instructing a good work ethic in the grandkids. <laughs> You will appreciate that someday. <laughs> You'll appreciate Grandpa's cracking the whip, so to speak. But he loved to teach his grandchildren about work and the sawmill. Herb and his brothers had a hand in building a bunch of homes, too, I'm told. Herb was always there to support his daughters in their activities and events, and even then tried to be there as often as he could for his grandchildren family was so important to Herb. His siblings, his wife, his daughters, their husbands and kids, his grandchildren were just all so important to him. And I'm just going to tell you, I'm just going to share just a couple scriptures here, but let me also say this too. The last few years, Herb was in the hospital quite a bit. You know it and I know it. For a lot of reasons. It wasn't just one. Unfortunately, there was issue after issue. I would visit him there often. And I just, I just like to visit him there. And, and so I would try to get there. And I remember him being in St. Cloud and Staples and places. And he had been, I think he was in Staples several days. And I had probably been there several times. And somebody else, maybe it was one of you that was there, maybe it was a sibling, I don't remember who it was that was there, but somebody was there, I was there visiting him, and he said to him, if you ever want to see the pastor, just go to the hospital. He'll come right over. I did visit him a lot in the hospital. I loved those visits. And I always saw him reflecting Jesus there, too, talking to nurses about the faith of the Lord. He wasn't bashful, and I so appreciated that. God was gracious those many times, and Herb always made it back home. The last few weeks, though, here in his home, he was tired. Physically tired. Probably tired of the pain. Plenty of physical difficulties. And I told you earlier, he said to Amanda, if I'm not here, you make sure you take care of Grandma. Maybe Herb knew. Maybe he knew it was time to receive his award. And on the last day of April, Herb met Jesus face to face. Herb loved a good salvation message. He told me so over and over and over. I loved having him in the church family. Because, uh, as I mentioned, he might he might speak about the clock. He did apologize to me after that. 
He said, brother, I don't know where that came from. And I said, don't apologize, Herb. But Herb was always one to shout out amen. I, I just loved his feedback. He was hurt those last few months in church. He was there with his walker. But he so loved to worship the Lord. I see his picture now on Facebook, and I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I got a chance to know and love Herb Richmond. And now I just want to give us a couple pieces of scripture, and I'll keep it brief. Romans 14, 7, 9 is another one that he highlighted. For none of us lives to himself, and nobody dies to himself. again and lived again that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Herb would ask us, and I will ask us, is he Lord for you? The other one I want to challenge us with is Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. And it's not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. We all know the scripture. But I want to say this, friends, to close. Herb Richmond is not with Jesus today because he attended church. Herb Richmond is not with Jesus today because he was a good guy. In fact, he was. He did, he did attend church. He was a wonderful man. Herb Richmond is not in heaven with Jesus today because he loved his family. All of these are beautiful and they're true. But Herb Richmond and anybody else who gets to go home to be with Jesus in heaven will be there because they have been born again. They have been born again. Jesus said very clearly in John chapter 3, unless a man be born again, he will never see the kingdom of heaven. Herb was with Jesus today because he was born again. He come to that point in life when he realized, I'm a sinner who needs a savior. And he come before God by faith, just like Ephesians 2, 8, 9. He recognized the grace of God, and he recognized his part, and that was the faith. I need to exercise my faith in the goodness of God, in the Son of God, and put my faith and trust complete in him. Herb did that, and that's why he's with Jesus today. I want to say this before I turn it over to Melody to sing. If we don't get to that point... We're not ready for heaven. And we don't know if we're going to live to be 70 or 80 or half of that. And so, friends, I want to encourage you. Herb would implore you. Have you made peace with God through faith in his son? Have you trusted him completely? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. Jesus said that. Not Herb, not Jim, not the other pastors here. Jesus said that. Nobody comes to the Father except through me, Jesus said. We must put our faith in him, receive the grace of God, and be born again. And when life runs out, we're going to be with Jesus. Praise God for the hope of heaven. Praise God for wonderful people that have been an encouragement to me, like Herb Richmond. Mel is going to sing for us again. Pastor Bob is going to close us in prayer with an announcement or two. And I'm just going to hang around here by the tractor and by Herb sitting on the seat. And if you're not sure about your eternal destination, friends, I or the other pastors here will be glad to help you get right with Jesus. There is no guarantee of tomorrow. Amen. God bless you.
God and our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for what you have done for us. We thank you for the memories of Herb Richmond. We thank you most of all for the memories of Jesus and for the way that uh, that relationship with each, with each other has affected so many of us. And we pray that we would not uh, put our faith or hope in a, in a person other than Jesus, but that we can be thankful for opportunities that you give us, again, even like this, to be reminded of what you can do in a person's heart and life when they surrender to you and give their hearts to Jesus. We are praising you today for what you've given us. We thank you for the, the good weather you have given. We thank you for the freedom we have. We thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus. And I pray that what we have heard today, that it might linger within our hearts, and that we would be truly thankful for each day that you give us and praise you for the way that you use individuals in our lives to draw us closer to Jesus as well. And I pray that for everyone here, they would sense the presence of God and surrender to his prompting by your spirit, and that uh, we would enjoy the time together, and most of all, the time we can spend with you. We ask your blessing upon the gifts of food, and uh, that you would just uh, give us strength, nourish us, as we have been nourished spiritually, we know that you can nourish us physically as well. Might you be praised, and might you be pleased what has been offered to you today, and that you'll go with us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, and helping to increase our faith. Thank you. In Jesus' name, 
Do you want to see the people's comments first or no?